Hey, y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I was not expecting to do this at all this morning, but there is big news afoot right now on the Tesla front. So let's go ahead and start with a, um, well, let's see if I can do it the correct way. Here we go. All right. This is a CNBC.com article that says Tesla will lay off more than 10% of global workforce. Read the Elon Musk memo. Tesla will lay off more than 10% of its global workforce, according to a memo sent to employees by CEO Elon Musk. The company's shares were down 3% Monday morning. I expect that will probably continue that trend. As we prepare the company for our next phase of growth, it is extremely important to look at every aspect of the company for cost reductions and increasing productivity, Musk said in the memo obtained by CNBC. As part of this effort, we have done a thorough review of the organization and made the difficult decision to reduce our headcount by more than 10% globally, the memo said. Unclear here whether they've made the decision or whether they've already notified everyone about this. That's a little unclear at this point. Anyway, the memo was first reported by Electric. Tesla has 140,473 40, employees as of the end of December. Uh, obviously some bruising, things like that, uh, you know, a bunch of stuff about China and all sorts of things. And of course, uh, the recent quarter uh, was not particularly great in terms of deliveries in particular, not even production. So there there have been some, some let's say, issues in paradise and so forth. So um, yeah, <laughs> thank you from Brian, Future Aza, huge news, right? And Brian, uh, you've got the link if you want to, it's over there on Rebellionaire. So I've, I've invited some folks to come on and to come on board and uh, talk about this if they have time to do that anyway. So let's take a look at a couple of other things. This is, uh, so some of this is firmly in the land of Rumorville. So um, please understand that lack of badges does not mean anything, but in a couple of cases, we, I think, have pretty good evidence it does. So some people that don't have badges, uh, Franz obviously does still have a badge, thank goodness. Ashok does not have a badge. He is the head of Tesla AI FSD. Oh, and we've got Brian coming on. Cool. I will add Brian to the stage. Hello. What's up? Hello, hello. Hey, I'm going to see. I got to turn this. Wait, I'm, let me put on some headphones here so I can hear you sure, better without sure. echo issues. All right, check it out. What you got? Uh, now I can't hear you at all. Weird. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I'm going to continue on while Brian. Sorry is... about that. Oh, Sorry that's okay. About that. Just getting in focus there. It's cool. Um, yeah, this is interesting, yeah, crazy, a little discouraging. <laughs> I think. Right. Um, right. There's, <clears throat> you know, uh, my my biggest concern. I shared this on the Rebellion Air uh, private chat. Was that right. I'm concerned that there may be a lack of people. Uh, meaningfully capable of pushing back on some of the crazier, bigger ideas that that maybe need pushing back on from time to time, whatever they may be. Right. We know there was quite a bit of uproar uh, from the Walter Isaacson book when yes. Elon was saying, we're definitely building it without a steering wheel. Right. And everyone was saying, look, we may not be at that point just yet. Right. It may make sense to at least and, have the and, flexibility. And this circles back around again because, of course, RoboTaxi Reveal Day is 8-8 now. So that may be back in the forefront of people's you know, it might not be something that went away a year and a year plus ago. It might be back uh, on the center screen. Um, and hi to Scott as well. Uh, just real quick, um, I just wanted to say this about uh, what's going on here. So Drew Baglino has separately said, absolutely, he is. Uh, let's see if I've got this here. Yeah, here we go. So I made the, here, let me blow this up a little so it's easier to read. I made the difficult decision to move on from Tesla after 18 years. Holy crap, you know, <laughs> talk about somebody who's been around forever. I'm so thankful to have worked with the team and learned countless incredible, uh, sorry, and learned from the countless incredible people at Tesla over the years. I love tackling nearly every problem we solved as a team and feel gratified. And then underneath, he said, looking forward to having no concrete plans beyond spending more time with my family and young children. Uh, but as people who know me well can attest, I have a difficulty, I have difficulty sitting still. So he is for sure out because he said that. We also have um Walter Bloomberg has announced, and he's usually pretty good about this, that uh, Rohan Patel has left the company. Um, and so we can see from this post by Tesla Chan that uh, he does not have a badge. He used to have a badge and Drew does not have a badge and he used to have a badge, the Tesla badge. So anyway, so this at this point, this is all breaking, so things could change as we're speaking, but that's what I've got. So um, I, I think number one is just to sort of evaluate what's going on. Number two, is this a positive or a negative? Certainly Elon Musk has cut, uh, like he came in famously to to Twitter and just to decimated it. Um, so certainly <laughs> this is not the first time that Elon has cut. And I, I believe that Tesla's gone through rounds of cuts before, right? I, I'm trying to remember back a few years. 
Yeah, uh, yes, they have. And, and yeah. John, this is technically a decimation because it's 10%. I, I know. It's actually Twitter literally was a decimation. Twitter way more than a decimation. Yes, it went sorry. way beyond the 10% threshold. <laughs> Octimation or something. Like Dodeca, yes, yes, whatever. yes, yes. Anyway. So, so, I mean, so, yeah. it's like I, I take issue when people misuse sorry. the actual definition sorry. of decimation. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Yes. So yes. worth pointing out, there is a uh, private message that we can see in the Rebellionaire group from one mm -hmm. of the other Rebellioners confirming a message from Rohan that he has departed the company. Okay, okay, gotcha. So we have that. I, I mean, I won't since that's in the private message space. It's I won't in the bring it up. Message but, space. Yeah. but so uh, yeah. yeah. So, so we, we can, do. Yeah. We, we do have that him. information on background, right? Uh, but right. I'm not going to say who messaged who. Because... Yes, that well, and it's all good. I mean, it it seemed like it was fairly. We have public a uh, public. Uh, who was it? Walter Bloomberg. So, you know, so, and he's again, so we have public information that Rohan has left, and then we have private confirmation that that is true. And certainly Drew put it out on X. So clearly he is, has left unclear. Uh, you know, the timing seems awfully coincidental that he just so happened to leave today, but it could be coincidental. Um, um, so the interesting thing about this is a 10% workforce cut you can imagine 143, 147,000 employees, right? 140,000, sorry. They have a lot of employees. So that's about 14,000-ish employees. And generally speaking, you could imagine some people in middle management, you know, you, you if you think about cuts, that's generally the way it goes. But this looks like this is slicing pretty heavily at the head of the snake. Um, and that could have some severe consequences. I, I, I don't know what either of you have to, to say about that. So, add to it. so I'll, I'll start by saying that on... On production, as uh, efficiencies are streamlined, you can cut people without reducing, while still increasing production. Right. On the management side, you can always find a person or two to trim. Uh, on the sales side, apart from the whole thing that you're supposed to now give everyone an FSD demo, right. I'm sure you can you can cut some people. I don't imagine service will see cuts because the fleet is still growing and aging. Right. Uh, 10% 10, 10 is about the size of the cuts they did in 2022, which right. was, you know, not that crazy. They did cuts of about 5% in, I think, 2017 and 2019. Right. Uh, trimming the fat is not a bad thing. And there are people saying, well, but I thought they were hiring for positions. Yeah, those are different positions. Right. You know, the, the right. analogy I drew was, wait, you want me to lose weight by adding muscle mass? Muscle weighs <laughs> more than fat, you big dummy. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's what you have to do sometimes. That right. part doesn't concern me. The layoffs at the at the worker level don't concern me in the same right. way that they do departures of senior management with a lot of years in the game and yeah. that they're both leaving at the same time. And uh, I don't know, I don't know what's going on, but I fear something is going on behind the scenes that we can't see that right. is uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, and, and of course, earnings call is next Wednesday, next Tuesday, next Wednesday, the 20. Oh gosh, I'm forgetting. It's next week sometime, but it's pretty soon. It's coming up. Uh, Scott, I, I think yes. it's Wednesday. It's the 23rd. Yeah. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Or, so, or, is that, uh, or is that Tuesday? Uh, that's my son's birthday. So I think it actually is the 23rd because I'm recalling it's his birthday. So, um, and Shakespeare's too. So there you go. <laughs> oh, that I didn't know. I Lots didn't of know. big things yeah. happening on the 23rd. Yeah. I guess uh, the, the other yeah. thing to point out is, um, Brian, you might be able to remember this is that on the last layoffs in, in 2022, there was also something about like a 10% and did it apply? I'm not sure if it was like across the board or if it more or less was like at the engineering level and it had nothing to do at the hourly level. Um, it was a, it was pretty much across the board. You might be thinking of, was it uh, Stellantis who did their deep cuts recently that only affected the engineers and white collar and mm -hmm. none of the production? Yeah, that's it. But I was thinking about the Tesla specifically is they were still ramping up. So they were still hiring people to run the lines. And it that's may have been a misinterpretation but... of whether the temperature, but the, yeah. the wording here seems like they're really talking about the entire workforce. Um, unless, mm -hmm. you know, there was some nuance in there we kind of missed. It's like, no, no, I'm just talking about a particular group of employees, in which case the overall numbers is a lot less, but it, it's Well, I don't know how you out. cut 10% of PR. <laughs> right. It's already yeah. zero. Right. Zero. Yeah. And yeah. It, uh, another thing that's unfortunate is that Drew and uh, Rohan were, were the two people who would actually share information with the community. Yes. Yes. And that's a I, big loss. That is a big everyone. loss. Uh, I, 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 um, 
Interestingly enough, I just without revealing again the details of this stuff, looking at the text message that was sent out, uh, it looks like Rohan said, he says, quote, I decided to leave last night. So, you know, Drew also decided to leave last night. So they may not have been in the direct chopping block, but they may have had significant, um, they may have taken umbrage with what was going on. I, I don't know. So, <laughs> it, it, well, it, I'll, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll tell you when uh, Waymo looked like they were just about done, just about solved. They right. had co CEOs, one of them left, and then a couple months later, the other one left. And people said, Oh, this doesn't mean anything. And I said, That's these people, if they're on the cusp, of universal level five of global level five they're right. not going to leave just before it happens yes so it's not you can't always hand wave it away yeah uh, my concern is that the 8-8 date being so far out is more hopes and dreams rather than material things if it was ready to go it would be, have been scheduled for two weeks but that right. far out i think there's a lot of we can get it done by then if we just buckle down and if i'm someone who's already got made a, an insane fortune maybe it's time for me to say why don't you deal with this one right. you made the mess you clean it up <laughs> yeah uh, i i i did I, I i kind of noted that even when we first heard about the 88 date that it was about four months away at the time and i was like that sounds like one of those um because reading Walter Isaacson's book, you know, very famously at SpaceX and stuff, he was like, we're going to do a presentation. And they're like, we got nothing to present. And, and so all of a sudden, everyone is like 24 hours a day, just like going crazy, trying to get this to work. And so that may, you know, this is all speculation, of course, but I think you might be correct that we might be looking at a situation where he's just like, I'm going to lay it out there and you're going to have to figure it out and make it work. And some other people might have been like, no, no, thanks. <laughs> I'm good. There, yeah, I had a chance to that. talk with with one of their web developers who said mm -hmm. that, and I, I don't remember if it was the Model 3 release or which one, but on one of the releases, they were back at their you know control room where they run the right. website. Right. And they kept, people would like text them and go, oh, it's neat that you guys are doing this. And like, what, what are they talking? So they finally had to put up a screen with a live feed of Elon's tweets at the time oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> to find out what the hell it is we're supposed to put on the Holy website <laughs> because he kept just changing things on the fly. Oh my gosh. And uh, that's, that's a very exciting way to do your business, but I can see why it might be frustrating for <laughs> yeah. others in positions of senior management. <laughs> Jeez. Um, since this is a live stream, I want to back up just one second. I'm going to share the screen here quick, if I can do that. Uh, just, just to recap the, the big news, Tesla is going to lay off more than 10% of the global workforce. Uh, Elon Musk said that, you know, this is something to, um, uh, you know, basically, it's just like we got we got to trim the fat, essentially. But the perhaps bigger news about all of this is that several people, including Drew, Drew Baglino and Rohan Patel, have decided to um, vacate the premises, as you might say. So just a quick recap. And it's possible that a shock as well, but we have heard nothing about that. And as far as I know, he never had a Tesla badge on his account. So that I don't think should indicate to us that he has uh, done anything, but you know, but I'm just pointing that out because Tesla Chan had, had pointed that. So, and, and probably my guess is that we will hear some other fallout as the day progresses, that there will be some more people that we know of. I mean, there's many, many people at Tesla is 140,000 plus people. And so there's a lot of folks that are just working there and, and, you know, I, I hopefully their layoff packages have been good <laughs> and and hopefully that's the kind of thing where where people can uh can at least take some time off and enjoy themselves and and not have to get too stressed about it but it is a big deal i mean it's a lot of people uh, Fourteen thousand ish people is is a big chunk i'm yeah. i am looking at rohan's um tweet post right and he doesn't really say like he made the decision to leave or, or something like that. I mean, I'm looking right. at it trying to see if it was. Yeah, this is this off. is what's in the rebellionaires uh, um, list. There's there's a communication between two people. I, again, just trying to. Stay no, no, I'm I'm, I'm reading his actual. Uh, Rohan actually posted something. Oh, he did. Okay, oh, he did. He, I he did. So uh, if outside. you go there, you know, in the past eight years at Tesla, I've been filled with uh, every emotion, but the feeling I have today is utmost gratitude. For unbelievable right. customers and fans, I'm inspired by your passion, impact on Tesla and the mission. Yeah. To Elon Musk for giving me the chance and empowering me to lead a big initiative company to the broadest <laughs> team. Never say die attitude and happiness. 
um, to, you know, make the place special, the best pilot, you know, he just kind of goes on thanking everyone, thanking everyone. Basically his plans says are to be the recess monitor for his second grade daughter <laughs> and practice right. violin and, <laughs> and do some other things. So ba basically he's, he's taking some time off, but right. no indication that it was a, a decision on his own, which may be a little bit different than Drew's. Right. I may be reading yes. too much in between the lines. Yeah. Well, again, I'm just noting the fact that the text message that we had access to specifically said I made the decision to. So it, it sounds okay. I, you kind of feel like, but, you know, you know how when the CEO steps down to spend more time with the family, sometimes that's not really their decision. So, you know, right. it, it, you can always paper over something and make it sound very much like it's the uh uh, the the person's decision. I'm not I'm not claiming either way. It very well could be that that they have decided this because they may have just been like, okay, the cuts are going on. We don't have enough uh, human beings to do the project that we're assigned to do, and so screw this. I just you know <laughs> I've, I've had enough. I'm out of here. Um, so that 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 very well could be what what happened. That they disagreed with this 10 percent cut, thought it was too big, and have decided to leave. Um, it yeah, it, yeah, this could still be no news at all. This could be something yeah. that was slowly bubbling and they, you know, again, right. 18 years is a fantastic run yeah. for a one company. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. Unheard of. Yeah. Uh, Especially but, with the kind of insane hours that we're talking, you know, it's not like, you know, kick back and eat and drink lattes all day, kind of 18 years. It's like you're working hard. Yeah, so, these aren't yeah. Mary Barra years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this yeah. could be nothing. But it could be something. And uh, right. the preponderance of evidence, as far as I can see, says it's something. Yeah. And uh, yeah. maybe, <laughs> hopefully, it's a wake up call and we get past it a little bit. But Right. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, we had, um, 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 why am I forgetting? <laughs> Master of Coin, Zach, uh, you know, that, that we've had, there's been some movement lately um, in the company. And it's a big company. So obviously things are going to change. It's just the way, it's the nature of the beast. But, um, you know, there's another piece of this whole puzzle that I, I don't want to get too far into the weeds with because it may be reading too much into the tea leaves. But, you know, Elon's been like, hey, I need, I need, well, first of all, his entire compensation package was like, you know, <laughs> given this by the Delaware court. So he's pretty um, salty about uh, the whole Tesla thing right now. And try, I'm sure trying to renegotiate some new compensation package with the board and all of that. And so there's a just a lot of stuff that's happened, a lot of drama outside of the engineering in the past year or so. And and so that just may be, there just may be a lot of pieces of that puzzle that are all sort of uh, falling. And, and like you said, it could be nothing. Uh, a 10% cut is not, again, what'd you say, 2022? So it wasn't that long ago. And then there was one three or four years prior to that. So it, it's something that's clearly uh, Elon does from time to time. And I think it's actually a good thing probably because you tend to overhire and then you need to cut back and then you need to you overcut and then you're like, whoops, now we got to add some people back. So, you know, that kind of thing can happen. But the concern is that there's something deeper going on and that there's some significant dissension. And I think, Brian, you started this whole thing off by saying your concern is that there are people who are, the the voice of reason potentially the people who push back um you know i know yeah so absolutely i i we know that he loves to have big grand ideas right. he told us that we're past the days of betting the farm we're right. not going to put the whole company at stake anymore but it feels like with robo taxi he's yeah. absolutely willing to do that again right and i'm not excited about betting the farm i had a gentleman ask me at a meetup yesterday where when FSD, when level five, when, right. And because I'm good at pro projecting things. And right. I said, I'm good at projecting physical things, factories, right. production, yeah. things that I can measure and make sense. You're asking me when something that's never been done before will be done for the first time. Right. And I'll refer you to that brilliant piece of uh, reporting, the, the op-ed in the New York Times, powered flight by man will not happen for 1 million to 10 million years of <laughs> continuous effort. Nine yeah. days later, powered flight. Okay, so I missed my... Just a few orders of magnitude, <laughs> seven or eight orders of magnitude, yeah. but, uh, I'll yeah. not eat. I mean, like a hunt, like, uh, yeah, it was days instead of, right. Yeah. I mean, right. 
and on the opposite end of on the opposite end of things of course we had flying cars predicted all the way along and those are not happening anytime soon so you know so so you can you can over op, over over optimistically um guess or you can under optimistically guess and 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 clearly you know yeah. i think all of us not just elon musk but i too have been like oh yeah full self driving it's going to robo taxis next year oops robo taxis next year oops robo so you know it feels like we're getting really close but it it's still a, it could be a bet the farm sort of situation if you don't make a model 2 if it's only robo taxis and there's no more model 2 which was again another rumor that was neither confirmed nor denied by tesla um Yes. So, and yeah. and I had problems with the Reuters reporting, yeah. not just because Reuters has a track record of right. making up things like this. Uh, you know, never forget the whole Giga Mexico City that they're going right. to fly cars out from. Come on, get real. <laughs> they, and they've got. So, oh, and the Shanghai Model 3 is going to be sold in the U.S. These right. things don't even make sense and they'll print them. Right. But their but their source was a supplier who was told that one program had ended. Right. And that doesn't mean that that's the whole program yeah that means one part of of a program has and it could also mean that your involvement has yeah. come to an end we've got another supplier so right. scott if 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 a supplier for a uh, for figure ai gets a memo saying we no longer need your actuators does that mean figures not making robots anymore uh, no, that means they came up with a better way to make actuators, right. either a better supplier, or they figured out how to do it themselves. Yeah. So it could be yeah. the same thing with a Tesla. Tesla is fully integrated. And a lot right. of times that's what happens is that you start working with your suppliers because you need them to get to a particular point. And at some point, you know, your services are no longer needed. Now you're doing it yourself. So right. in many cases, uh, you will create your own kind of future competition or put yourself out of business when you work with some of these companies. It's just, right. it's just a natural thing. Yeah. Um, you know, I've seen it in software as well, where people will develop something on top of your platform until they're able to figure out how to develop that piece themselves. And eventually they do that and you move on and, and you understand that's the rule of the game. Right. Uh, and so, that, at uh, least, you know, you get 10 years of revenue out of them in the meantime, right. while they try to figure that out. So this is uh, Scott Graham notified me of this. Thank you, Scott, that Ashok just added the Tesla badge to his thing. So <laughs> this is a live view of of the uh, of of X. So so he has been he has very clearly made a statement by doing that. So by yeah. throwing it back on. So yeah, so it was. Yeah, I don't think I we guess, ever had it on there so previously. Yeah, I mean, yeah. is did we ever have? Yeah, we had to do something to get our billionaire badge on, right? Just mm -hmm. because we were in there, I don't think it happened automatically. I think we still had to go through a step. Yes. Do, do you remember? That's I correct. mean, it's like we've only done it once. So. Yeah, I know. I, I don't have. I, I think have we just had to. The administrator had to add us, and then we had to accept it. Yeah. That way, someone nefarious system. couldn't right. just go around handing out yeah, badges yeah, yeah, for yeah, something yeah, terrible. Yeah. Right. 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 So, so we had to. Yeah. So we, there had to be a confirmation. And you know, when you're like a really busy person, and those things come in, you're supposed to do something. Sometimes you just don't get around to it. Right. You know, oh, it'd get buried then, for sure. Yeah, it probably got buried. And, and Ashok probably spent, you know, who knows, like more, more than an hour going around. It's like, and right. you, someone tell me, how do you activate this thing again? I mean, you, you can be this, a smart person like him, but that little detail could be like really hard to figure yeah. out sometimes. Yeah. And then, of course, exactly. when you do it, it's really easy. And uh, Brian, you just found out today we were talking about the, um, the car wash mode. Now, I've used yeah. it two times, and I swear something different happened because the first time I used it in a car wash, it automatically put it in a neutral and maybe in the update oh, something no, happened it doesn't my settings because the last time i went there I was like going over it's like what's going on here and it's like oh you explicitly have to go down to say free roll mode yeah and so yeah, and i didn't they, know yeah 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 <laughs> so yeah. yes because the the I, I usually so i when i go to the car wash i put it in car wash mode as soon as i get up to the gate where you pay and yeah. as long as you're just driving a couple miles an hour, it stays, and then you have to put it in neutral. So but you don't so, have to. Yeah. You you can in car wash mode when you enable it, it does have a free roll mode that will kick oh. it into yes. Oh, yeah. so it'll actually automatically yeah, see you didn't know that because I didn't know that either. I thought yeah. you had to explicitly put it in neutral. Oh, that's no, interesting. No. So um, you, so yeah, it's, I just modes. want to respond to a quick thing. Michael Hansen said is maybe a shock is listening to us or basically he said he might be in here. I was like, that would be pretty. I don't think a shock is wasting his time listening to us. But anyway, if, if you are here, hi. <laughs> so, but, yeah. but I hear that uh, Rohan might have some free time and yeah, Drew. Rohan so if you guys too. are here, <laughs> yeah. if you guys are here, uh, let us know in the chat and we'll get you added. We have to wait know, for serious. Rohan to have, have his cup of uh, morning coffee. Otherwise, exactly. it might be a bit salty. That's okay. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. he can drink it while he's on 
come with us. We don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mind. Yeah. I don't mind. I've got that much. I'm flexible. It's That's great. Right. We're all very good. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, I mean, this is, um, I, I, there's just, there's a lot of moving parts and clearly whatever we say right now, you know, in 24 hours, they are going to be like, Oh yeah, that was clearly incorrect or, or, or whatever. And, um, I think the big moment to wait for is going to be the earnings call because it has been the consensus from the last couple of earnings calls that they have not been particularly like <laughs> there hasn't been this sense of like, yeah, rah, rah. It's been a little bit, um, a little chaotic and hasn't, they haven't gone particularly well. So uh, this one's going to be quite the challenge because, you know, clearly things went down, metrics went down. Uh, deliveries went down. I, I was much more the production. I was not that concerned about because it's like a whole bunch of crap happened, right? The the Chinese New Year, the the arson thing, and the ramping of the Model Three in Fremont. Red Sea. So, yeah, exactly. So I mean, oh yeah, the Red Sea. That's huge. So, but that actually has an effect on deliveries more than production. But I was more concerned about the delivery numbers going down because I was like, ooh, <laughs> that shows if you have a lack of demand, that's a problem. That, that's so the production problem. shortfalls were not unpredictable the delivery yes. shortfall was unpredictable yeah every quarter you'll see a whole bunch of people throw out numbers and this right. quarter a lot of the usual suspects myself included james stevenson included we did not provide delivery numbers because it was too unpredictable right and i'm not going to state something unless i have a good idea on production all of it you could see coming a mile away right. at least i could i missed by 0 0.36 percent right um because nobody knows the factories like me and then so on on that part i'm not as worried i did see a comment that i wanted to address someone uh, cascadia design had asked had said they should have done the compact before the truck and i hear that a lot and it mm -hmm. just wouldn't work because every vehicle they've made has been a stepping stone toward the compact you couldn't uh do the you know the cyber truck without the castings which you right. had to introduce with the y then the structural battery pack right then the uh, the steer by wire and next comes the brake and the ethernet the 48 volt the right everything is a stepping stone and the biggest obstacle would have been if they had done the compact first it would have been ready a year maybe two ago the battery right. supply would not have been mature enough to handle it uh there they they're there was no availability for millions of extra cars right. worth of batteries. And I don't even think they had the I don't think they had the right technology in place to build the car for twenty five thousand dollars a couple of years ago. And 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 I've been saying that that the cyber truck is you know I, I've I, my my thing is the cyber truck is not about the cyber truck. It's a low volume experimental vehicle to figure out how to do forty eight volt to figure out how to do steer by wire to figure out potentially how to cast the whole car as one underbody, you know, a bunch of different things, technologies they need to figure out. Do you want to introduce 48 volt on a product that you're going straight yeah. to two to 4 million units on yeah. or a hundred thousand ramping to a half million? Right. I think you're absolutely right, John. Yeah. That is exactly what you want to do is, is, and, and getting all the suppliers on board for something new right. and making sure everything works risky, dangerous. You got to, you got to walk before you can run. If if the if the compact should have come before the Cybertruck, then it should have come before the Y and the three and the right. X and the S. <laughs> yeah. Just start with it. I mean, I mean, I want to be super successful. Can I start there? Right. <laughs> it's like well, uh, Jer yeah. Jordan just put out a post this morning that I guess he's doing a deep dive on the forty eight volt architecture. Mm -hmm. He was yeah. like, oh wow. I mean, it's like it's it says it really makes sense as far as the cost and production and. Not much more than that. I mean, he's right. he's getting in there, and eventually we we will see um, where his conclusions are coming from. But already he sees that as like, yeah, that was something really big, and you couldn't right. have got there without first testing it out on the cyber truck and bringing that along. So right. That, right. That's the well, main I, reason. Yeah. And I talked to my Bobs from Bobs Bibs and Bobs. I've got several Bobs <laughs> that I use. They're my parts suppliers who give me inside information. Um, and they work with a variety of manufacturers, not just Tesla, but also Tesla. Right. And I asked them point blank, is 48 volt going to be cheaper? And they said, no, in the short run, it's going to be more expensive. And right. over the long run, the savings will be maybe pennies because the amount of wiring in each individual part is so minimal. Right. The real savings comes from the integration and the 
the ethernet basically. Yes. Um, and that also allows for unboxed. And right. uh, then the piece I was able to put together is without the 48 volt, without the ethernet, you can't go to break by wire because you don't have enough power uh, going yes. through. And, and steer by wire. And steer by wire, very importantly. Right. Uh, the power is not available to turn the wheels. It, it, the two it, obstacles to unboxed were the wiring harness and the hydraulic lines. You yeah. can't put those in after the fact. You have to put them in beforehand. And right. if those two systems are now one system that's modular, that can be cl that can be connected easily and painlessly, then unbox becomes a reality again. And in the the missing piece that I shared with Jordan was the fail safe. You need right. a fail safe on brakes. You need it. Oh yeah. Well, guess what? Guess what? If your car can get you zero to 60 in four seconds, it can get you 60 to zero in four seconds with regen alone. So right. the fail safe is the motors. Right. Right. Try yeah. that in a gas car. No, it doesn't work so well. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, you know, I've had, I've had my brakes go out on me a couple of times in a gas car and it is a terrifying experience. Um, so yeah, you get that, you get a big bonus with an EV because it will come to rest. Like the regen will kick in and it will eventually come to rest. It's not, it's probably not going to be four seconds, but it will come to rest relatively well, quickly. It, it, is, so. it wouldn't be four seconds, but yeah. in a safety mode, yeah, it can, exactly. it, well, it already can fake it with, right. with regen. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So very good. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of looking at the comments. Uh, sorry, folks, that I can't respond to everything that everybody's saying, but really interesting stuff. Um, Pre-orders. I don't know. A lot of talk about the Cybertruck. I, I, apparently, we touched a nerve here. Some people saying, you know, it's a complete boondoggle. Others being like, well, 200, 2 million pre-orders. I'm very curious because I know that I'm somewhere around 650,000 in line. And I I'm very curious to see when my number comes up and when they go like, hey, do you want to configure your, because that's going to give me some indication, like we'll know approximately how many Cybertrucks have been built. And that's going to give some indication of like how far, like how many people decided, nah, I'm not interested. Um, I, I think that will be. So a big one, a big one, you know, is there are people that you and I know who've ordered 10, 50, a hundred of them yes, for yes. a robo taxi fleet or even a right. Turo fleet right. who are not the, in a, if for robo taxi, it's obviously not ready if, if FSD right. and autopilot aren't enabled yet, but also, uh, even for a Turo fleet at a hundred or 120, you better make hay while the sun shines. Cause those numbers are going to drop real quickly. Once right. things get to, to volume. Um, I did want to address somebody who's asking about the, uh, break by wire. There's no break by wire on the cyber truck. Break by wire is a developed established technology. Brembo yeah. offers it. Uh, but it is my assumption that that will come with the compact. Right. Right. And, and some people are asking, they've just joined us. So hi, if you just joined us. So the big news is that Tesla is going to lay off more than 10% of global workforce, which is equating to somewhere around 14 or 15,000 employees. Um, but the bigger news is that uh, we uh, we know that Rohan Patel has left and also that Drew Baglino has left uh, at the top. And we've also got confirmation now, at least from the badge, that Ashok uh, Eliswamy, who is the head of Tesla's um, AI full self-driving team has not left as far as we know, because his badge <laughs> suddenly appeared on his, um, on his account this morning, which it wasn't there before. So, so yeah, that seems like a pretty good indication that he's still kicking along. So that, that would have been, I think that that would have been exceptionally bad news. The other people it's like, yeah, you know, they've been there for a while and they have the right, they, they both looks like both of them decided to leave, not were fired. Now, of course there could have been pressure on them. But, uh, but, but, you know, if Shark had left, I would have been like, uh oh, because he's been very excited about the prospects of full self driving autonomy. Also, I'm sure he's in charge of the Optimus program as well. I can't, I don't remember exactly how all that stuff works, but, you know, there's no chance that he's not involved in that because he's a robotics guy. I mean, that's what his background is. So, um, so the if exciting. he, yeah. Yeah. The the exciting thing to me is with all this doom and gloom and 10% layoffs and two big senior managers leaving, right. the stock has stabilized at down yeah. less than 3%. Oh, that's actually very surprising. <laughs> that is a little surprising. I, I, I actually assumed it was going to be just crashing today. So I thought it'd be a bloodbath. Uh, oh, it, yeah. it dropped quickly and then it leveled. 
Interesting. And then it leveled. Okay. Now wow. that could, by the time you good folks at home see this, it could right. be something very <laughs> well, different. The, the other thing is, it's funny. It depends upon the people look at. It. I think most of that was probably the the, the shock of Drew leaving. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, would would yes. have been like, well, would have roiled some people that, that were insiders. That's that's very important. Mm -hmm. And then um, you might think, well, then shouldn't the the fact that there was also confirmed layoffs, 10 percent, that's going to be a really bad sign. And it doesn't right. necessarily work that way, because a lot of times you'll see a company stocks going down, down, down. And when they announce layoffs, suddenly the stock goes up. Right. Uh, so right. so it will be interpreted the other way. It's like, oh, there's going to be cost savings. You know, So a lot of, it can be interpreted that way. And who knows, maybe the leveling off was the fact that, oh, um, you know, there's there's also some other restructuring that's going on that may be a positive. Right, right. Uh, yeah. And and again, I, I Elon is famous for this. And honestly, you know, Silicon Valley, interestingly enough, has it looks like taken a bit of a lesson from him because when he did it with Twitter and everyone said Twitter's going to fail and fall apart and burn like a dumpster fire and then it didn't i think a lot of other companies were like huh <laughs> we now have permission and a precedent that shows that it actually works so you know it's been it's been pretty brutal in the silicon valley west coast uh, tech space recently because a lot of people have been laid off and it's unfortunate for the individual workers but it's it's i don't know brian you were talking about that earlier you know it's like if you eat a lot of food you're gonna have to go on a diet at some point right and the company is the same thing it's like well okay it's <laughs> impossible it's impossible to only hire good people and yes yes mass layoffs are an easy way to to do some quick fat trimming yeah and uh i can tell you from my experience the only you know the the service center employees are great all those sales and service people i've worked with are great right. they don't know anything if you go in and try and get some inside information and ask 10 of them you'll come out with 15 or 20 different answers right. <laughs> uh, and then people will post it as fact and then tomorrow electric will run it as an exclusive and right. then sawyer will break it right but uh then but at the management level and the all the white collar people i've had a chance to work with were pretty exceptional but but none of them were really Tesla enthusiasts before they came aboard, which right. struck me as odd. They they're not <laughs> they're not as uh, into it as we are. Yeah, which is yeah, which is wild. I'm disappointed that we that and I'd said this earlier in the show for people just joining now. There's our as a community our. Rohan and Drew were our two big sources of information on yeah. X. They yeah. were the ones willing to actually share with us what's going on. Right. And uh, losing that is kind of a big deal. There's no PR department. So it's not like any of us here get inside information directly. You know, Tesla's not feeding us stories. They're not inviting us to events necessarily. Right. Um, you know, it's it's frustrating and uh <laughs> it's going to make getting good information out a little bit more difficult right. unless right. unless something changes and i don't know what would yeah now, there's also the interesting question of with those two positions um they 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 seem to call out to need to be replaced right it's not like a position i don't know like there's a middle manager and it's like no we just don't need that position at all so you're laid off but with these right. two with with drew and rohan it seems like they're going to have to replace them with somebody so the question is are they going to replace them with somebody who's just like mm, you know vault fort knox <laughs> not going to talk at all about right. anything or are they going to be willing to be um to share publicly um hopefully they'll be willing to share uh yeah yeah but so few are that yes the odds are not in our favor yes exactly and you know and again we don't know as we said earlier we don't know what the circumstances are we don't know if there was a, a attempted mutiny or something you know i'm not i'm putting that a little too excessively <laughs> but you know i'm just saying like if there was some uh -huh. significant turmoil and there was a you are going to take some time off and go be with your family or whether there alternatively because the, the timing is too coincidental otherwise alternatively there very much could have been like we disagree with cutting this deeply right now we think we need all hands on deck and therefore you know we're going to leave uh or alternatively it might have been from the top there's like hey you've got this giant new thing on your plate take take robo taxi whatever and you have to make it happen by august 8th and they were like no no thank you <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna book it so um yeah 
many potentials. Yeah, a lot of possibilities. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, John, what do you think is coming on eight eight? On eight eight, I now there's a lot of people who are like, oh, we're going to have robo taxis driving all around the U.S. That's not going to happen on eight eight. That that no. so it said a reveal, and that means that they will probably show us the car. Um, I would assume without a steering wheel or pedal in it, and there will probably be some demo somewhere. I I kind of am of the opinion if they if they do it in Austin, it's going to have to be on a closed track because I don't think they'll have permission. If they do the announcement in the Bay Area instead, maybe they will actually, like San Francisco's pretty friendly to it, so maybe they'll allow people to actually go out and drive around in a robo taxi in San Francisco or something. Um, so, especially at that part of Fremont, gets pretty quiet around seven eight o'clock at night. Yeah, exactly. But it's mostly a regulatory approval thing, right? Because you know, so but certainly they could do it on a test track, right? They can be like, hey, test test drive it around and 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 try it out in our little yeah. thing. Yeah. So. But in but in Austin, as you know, the factory is not really in a neighborhood. It's no. It's it. There's no there's no restaurants around. There's nothing. Right. So that demo would not be very interesting or yeah challenging unless they just set up a fake environment where they just had cars crossing and you know pretending to be a, a normal environment so i i don't I, but I, I think it's going to be to that level it's going to be like look at the design of the car how cool is this it doesn't have a steering wheel anymore and maybe the seats rotate i don't know whatever but you know it'll be a reveal just like um just like the Cybertruck reveal, the Model 3 reveal, all of that kind of stuff over time. So I think people are very over-optimistic if they think that the vehicle is going to be on the roads the next day on 8-9. We're going to like be able to get our robo-taxi rides. That is not happening. Well, no. And we know because, in part, the factory itself hasn't been built yet. They can yes. make <laughs> a handful of them in the in, on a pilot line. Right. But really, the real pilot line is there in Austin. And right. we can see that it's not the equipment hasn't started going in. There's not enough walls and ceilings yet yeah. to start putting the equipment in. <laughs> right. I feel like those things are an important stepping stone to building a car. Right. Uh, yeah, they could easily set up a little fake village, a little fake community. Right. Um, I will uh, address Moon's question, what about Mexico? And I'll tell you that that's another drag on the stock is we were just sure that Mexico would be underway by now. We saw the groundbreaking in Nevada for the semi plant. Right. A year ago, it was announced. We're starting any day now. And right. That was over a year. Um, that's going to discourage a number of investors, and those delays absolutely throw a wrench into the idea of 50% compound annual growth. When, right. From where? Where are you going to put it? And having yeah. four factories building the Model Y may be a number that is too high. That may be too yeah. large of a number. So I don't know. Yeah, well, there's a distinct feeling that the Mexico factory, they were like, whoops, <laughs> we got a little bit too, uh, you know, carried away with our timelines and we need to slot. So, so I think from Tesla's point of view, and I, I actually personally agree with this, that they need to slow roll the Mexico factory in particular. The semi-truck factory is a different beast. I mean, I think that there's demand for that if they want to build it, but they may just feel like they don't have enough batteries or whatever things they need every, right now to do it. Every semi you build is about, what, seven cars yeah, that you it's can't a lot. build? Ten yeah. cars? Yeah. And in terms of, you know, I did see a comment saying that there's, well, Cybertruck production is paused. It's not paused. The, the story we saw was that shifts have been reduced by uh, 6%. They've reduced it from 24 hours of shifts to 22 and a half hours of shifts, right. uh, 21 and a half <clears throat> hours of shifts. So that's two and a half hours off the day. So I guess it's closer to almost 10%, but it is not much of the day that's missing. And right. it's deliveries that are paused while they address the accelerator pedal yeah sticking issue and there are i can think of five easy ways to fix that off the top right. of my head they just have to do whichever one is easiest yeah apparently toyota when they had a problem like that their solution was a sawzall to just remove the top of the of the of the oh. accelerator pedal <laughs> easy solved <laughs> hey, we're done so yeah uh and i just saw today i saw i think it was a surfing hippie doctor that uh he's great to follow by the way he sh he showed a video that somebody else had of of the that just pops right off and the danger of course is if that piece of plastic or whatever it is falls behind the brake or the accelerator pedal it can cause the brake not to be able to depress or the accelerator to get stuck so it, it it's 
dangerous. You certainly want to fix that problem. But obviously, given the number of cyber trucks that are hanging out in the parking lot in Austin right now, they don't want to ship them off and then have to do like a recall or a fix after the fact. They would much rather fix it in the in the in the factory lot. And the videos I saw, it was the only the accelerator affected and not the brake pedal. Oh, and I just meant if it fell off, it could fall behind the brake. You know, like it, it could get wedged. Any in, amount in of touching brake. the brake yeah. is going to deactivate the acceleration. Yes. And and that's something you can go out and try, you know, yeah. in your driveway. Yeah. Um, if you, because I've hit the gas and accidentally just barely tapped the, the brake a little and the car just stopped. And I was like, yeah. what the heck? <laughs> I, I broke it. I broke yeah. it, John. I've broken my vehicle. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I mean, it's it's a problem, but it's it's you know again early vins. It's they're they're like whoops, we discovered a problem and they're fixing the problem, and it should be a relatively easy fix. In the grand scheme of things, a little piece of plastic that sits on top of uh, or metal or whatever it is that sits on top of the plate is not a big deal. They'll figure that out. I've the latest I heard was it was going to resume shipments by the 20th or so. And so they'll get back on, on track with it. So, <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, yes. And the, uh, another headline I saw this morning was that the Tesla, ha that the Cybertruck has been plagued by an unusually high number of defects to which I would say, what's the normal number? Right. Because if you're not citing it, then w this is just a guess you're seeing yeah. it because this is the most observed vehicle launch. Right in generations ever maybe right. so of course you're going to people are citing just taking pictures of it on the highway right you could also use that to deduce that there's a billion of them on the road it you know you've got to bring numbers or or yeah. or maybe just zip it a little bit bring numbers to the party man bring, bring numbers Brian, man. I, That's, I have yeah. to ask you a question about one cyber truck that evidently someone really polished the cyber truck that it's mirrored surfaces and I'm like, is that even Ooh. street legal? It is street legal, and that's a wrap. You can get the a chrome silver wrap. I mean, no, it was like oh, really, really mirrored, really mirrored. I mean, it's like yeah. So uh, well, the one I means... saw was a was a wrap. It's it's a it's still vinyl, uh, but it's yeah, just uh, basically a fun. I'm just thinking as far as like fly. reflections and stuff like that. That oncoming headlights are going to be reflected back. You know, <laughs> if you're following this thing, your headlights can be reflected back. That, that's why I almost wonder is that. Is it street legal or or not? Huh. I haven't seen any regulations regarding that. Uh, it yeah, would be case, on a state I mean, by state basis. If I don't like people who are tailgating me or flashing me by, <laughs> is it okay for me to take Giant a mirror, mirror and literally put it in in my rear mirror, rear window? That'd be a hell of a thing. <laughs> I don't know if you could sell it that way, but you could. Yeah. But making your own modifications, there's a whole lot of leeway. Yeah, yeah, in terms yeah. Of what okay, you can do. yeah, but yeah. but still, I mean, like you you can. Um, you can do the tinting, but you can still get pulled over. I mean, you can make right. that modification, but you, you can be ticketed for that. Well, not yeah. it, again. That's state by state. That's why they, that's why they don't tint the fronts, but they will tint the backs from the factory. Is because the back windows can be tinted in every state, right. and the front only in some states. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's kind of. I, I'm thinking about the shape of the Cybertruck because even if it was highly ref, perfectly reflective, it's likely to bounce the lights up, you know, away. But more from the side, I think that would be the big problem because the back, the tailgate. I don't know. <laughs> that would be. It's well, an interesting, it's it's an interesting so it's little thing. I, like I'm a imagining mirror. sticking a couple of mirrors on the back of my car and driving around, and how annoying that would be to people behind you. It would just be. Did you see annoying. the the company in Vegas that put a a tv display reader board oh. ad on the tailgate oh because Did they have to take it down or was it is it okay the tailgate was up and it was just mounted onto the back no no i'm just saying did the did cops get after him or did they just allow that oh, say that's okay. i don't know that part but we haven't seen any more videos of it yeah. so i'm inclined <laughs> to think that might have been a bridge too far right because that's very distracting yes uh, yeah. and i think you could get away with saying you are displaying colors that are not official yeah on the on the surface that is required to have only amber and red right mm, true yeah as a light source as a light source that makes sense okay yeah and it's like what's the difference between that and having like a bunch of bumper stickers on there at least the bumper stickers are static right right versus right. if you were having a display that was constantly doing things and the lights are flashing i, I think there are even some some places where i, I know, remember going up like i-75 uh in, in ohio 
there's this one company that had one of those electronic signs over there. And if you're going up there around midnight, it was just so bright and everything else. They had it way, way too bright. I think eventually they had to tune it down because they probably were getting a lot of complaints. So there's going to be some light pollution issues and things like that. So how you can do that. There's, and then there's the other thing is that whether there's no law against it, if you get into an accident, more than likely you're going to somehow be liable, not for distracted driving, but <laughs> distraction driving. Distraction, yeah. Causing a distraction. Well, I think you can. You, um, you just know some lawyer will have a field day with something like that yeah. and say that you know, it actually caused. You it can with, call it you know, reckless really driving to an extent, right? If you're causing, because one of the things you can do is yeah. if you're causing distractions, weaving around, it can cause other people to get freaked out. Yeah. So yeah, yeah you yeah. can make that. Uh, so uh, Bar Barbird says the German government has confirmed that 3,000 employees in Berlin are to be cut. That's a big number there. Uh, the German government re requires Tesla to disclose this. So thank you for that. Um, so that. Uh, so it's four immediate. factories, it's not, it's not you know, four factories, it's about, it's about a quarter. So, I mean, that's kind of in line with approximately, you know, cutting a quarter from the, the, the that factory. Boy, the, the, that factory, I want to say only employs 10, 11,000 people. Right. So that's that the is, thing is it's not that many people there. So, yeah. That yeah. is a pretty deep cut there. Right. Hmm. Interesting. The, the that's other that's theory the I've part. heard is. Oh, what, what number did you hear, Scott? I, I, not, for some reason, 12,000 popped in my head, but we should, we should double okay. check that. Yeah. The, the, if you really want to be a, a, a dreamer and an optimist, the plausible theory I heard was they're all being replaced by optimists. <laughs> Little premature, uh, Scott, yeah, what do you think? No, no, not, not, not that soon. Not that <laughs> yeah, soon. they can't build them that fast. Uh, uh, <laughs> trying to find some information about how many how many employees are at Giga Berlin? Um, let's see. Employee, yeah, 11,500. So are in the 12th, yeah, that's a quarter. If that's true, if it's 3,000 people, that's more than 25% of their, that's a big cut. Yikes. Well, if you think about that, that was still kind of the lowest productivity plan for them all. I, I think yes. It's a bit of a disappointment in how long it took to get up to where they are. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um, well, it could, but there's also the alternative is it could show some weakness in demand in the European market as well. Yeah. That sounds like a whole shift to me. I assume they were yeah. doing yeah. three shifts, so maybe they've decided to eliminate the entire shift. Right. Interesting. Wow. Wow. A lot of interesting news these days. So, all right. Uh, we have, uh, you guys have been lovely being on here. I'm going to just real quick, just recap things. And of course, everybody should follow Scott and Brian Futuraza on, um, on X and also follow Brian's awesome channel, Futuraza, on YouTube as well. But just to recap things, Tesla is laying off 10% of the global workforce. Apparently, 3,000 people in Berlin specifically, which is a huge chunk of people. And uh, you know, perhaps more concerning is that we have now um, confirmation so that Rohan Patel is leaving. And uh, you know, as Drew himself said, he is leaving Tesla as well. So two senior management people have have decided to depart. So a, a, a pretty major, pretty major day on the Tesla front. Uh, I've yeah, seen so a lot of people go down also as, as the Monday massacre. Yeah, exactly. That's bloody that's Monday big numbers. Yeah. So yeah. So anyway, we will, I guess over time, we will find out exactly what the consequences of all this are. The earnings call next Tuesday or Wednesday is going to be quite the interesting earnings call. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I did want to put in a quick plug for June 15th in Muskegon, Michigan. Yes. The Michigan Owners Club is having a big event. And I can think of three amazing speakers <gasps> who will be there. <laughs> yes, it's it's John and Scott. They're both Jordan will be, be there. Let me see. Uh, well, Jordan the... Jordan isn't uh, isn't going to be speaking at least not yet. Um, mm -hmm. He may be he may change his mind on that, but uh, he's was not able to confirm. Uh, oh, yeah. But Sandy, Sandy Monroe, Andy will be yeah. there for sure. Dirty yeah, Tesla, Tesla will be there. Chris, Dirty, Dirty Tesla, Tesla. Tesla. yeah, all yep. those guys. So yeah, yeah, a lot of big amazing folks are are coming and yep. best in Tesla. Lars from Best in Tesla is Oh, he's coming in. too. I didn't even oh, know yeah. that. That's great. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And Jan yeah. from, yeah. from Tesla Fix is coming. Fix, yeah. Awesome. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this would be I, great. I, I pulled out all the stops trying to get some exciting different people to 
to show up. And that the list of people who were not able to join us was also very exciting and of right. course disappointing, but yeah. I understand some people have lives, whatever. <laughs> you're not allowed to do that. So yeah, if you're anywhere in the Midwest or just want to fly to the Midwest, I hear I've never been to Muskegon. I hear it's quite beautiful in the summertime. So, uh, oh yeah, yeah. So, lovely. Yeah. Great. Great Take a look. So awesome. Well, thank you both, Brian and Scott. Thank you so much. And again, make sure that you follow them on X and on YouTube and all of that stuff. And I'm going to go ahead and end the stream. And thank you everybody who's been commenting and all that stuff too. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.